Hello there. Uh, since I'm making this video for another uh, YouTube host, uh, let me just briefly introduce myself before I begin. Uh, my name is uh, Luka Popov. Uh, I hold a PhD in theoretical physics and I'm also an uh, adult chess improver. Uh, by adult, I mean uh, that I uh, started to take chess seriously as an adult. Uh, it was in fact uh, one year and a half ago uh, when I uh, decided to, to really start uh, working on chess and uh, my passion for chess uh, was uh, really at uh, at this, uh, that time. I am uh, now uh, 29 years old, uh, so I was uh, something like uh, 37, 38 uh, when I started uh, doing chess. And uh, well, uh, the thing I wanted to to share with uh, with uh, YouTube audience and uh, all other uh, adult chess improvements uh, out there is uh, my attempt uh, to achieve the uh, improvement in in this uh, well late late age. And uh, when I started to uh, take chess seriously and uh, to work on chess, I realized uh, that uh, uh, the way uh, chess is taught. Uh, as uh, uh, to, to the kids, and I, I mean scholastic chess, uh, when you are like 9 or 10 years old and you join your chess club or your uh, chess section in school, uh, there is a way uh, in which the chess is learned and uh, in which the improvement is achieved at that age. But uh, if you start late and uh, if you want to improve as an adult, then uh, the whole different uh, set of rules apply. Uh, our brains just don't, don't uh, work like uh, children's brains and uh, there are uh, some things which uh, had to be done differently if you want to improve in chess. So I did uh, quite a research uh, on the internet, I, I read uh, a few books uh, uh, about the topic and I wanted to find out uh, how to improve as, as an adult. Is it possible first of all and if it is possible uh, what is the method? And uh, as a result of my research, and I, I joined several uh, chess forums, Discord channels, and so on, I think I came up uh, with a method uh, which uh, I believe works, and uh, I want to share this uh, this method uh, with uh, with everyone else. And this is why I started my uh, YouTube channel just just to share uh, what I found out, and uh, just to know that I don't uh, speak uh, uh, just uh, out of nothing. I was uh, when I started. A uh, year and a half ago, I was uh, around uh, 1200 in uh, Leach's Blitz rating, and now I'm uh, 1700. So I managed to improve some uh, 500 points in the Blitz. And also, I was in Rapid Chess, which I uh, hold m much more relevant because uh, for adults, uh, uh, Blitz is not something you will be excellent in, most likely, if you started as an adult. So you have to focus more on uh, longer time controls. So in Rapid I was uh, 1600 and uh, now I am um, more than uh, 1900. So I did uh, um, prove, so to say, maybe it's a little bit strong word, but I did prove that uh, my method kind of works. And uh, I would just like to show you before I start uh, analyzing the game, uh, my, my Leach's profile so you, that you can see what I'm uh, talking about. Okay, so here it is. You can see that my current rating is uh, 1934, uh, but uh, you can also see that uh, only in June, so some six months ago, I was uh, 1641. Uh, so you, you can see you can see my progress, and uh, all the time I uh, I just uh, followed uh, my my method in which I I speak on on my channel and uh, almost in in any video I. I make I, I speak about how how to achieve this uh, this kind of improvement. Okay, so I hope I'm heading to uh, to 2000. This this would be excellent achievement if I manage uh, to do this. And uh, well, okay, this is the statistics. You can see that my lower rating was uh, 1635 only six months ago, and now it's uh, 1938. So uh, th this is what makes uh, me maybe competent to, to talk about this. Also, uh, you can see my, my other statistics. Uh, don't look at puzzles. I, I just uh, tried this new feature doing uh, the easiest puzzles. And if you miss a puzzle, then you drop uh, very much. I was uh, 2100 in, in puzzles when I was doing puzzles normally. But OK, you can see that uh, I, I did make some, some achievement, but you can also see that my bullet rating is, is criminally low. And well, I think this is just something uh, adult improvers have to deal with. We will never be uh, good in, a, in a blitz and bullet and uh, fast chess.
so if you want to find out more about uh, my method and how how did I improve and how I uh, suggest uh, you can improve as well then uh, check out my channel I have also uh, created a playlist uh, called uh, guide to adult improvement in chess and you can just uh, uh, see uh, more about my method and uh, one uh, very important thing about uh, this method is to analyze your own games and this is what I do all the time I analyze all my long games and also my rapid uh, rapid games uh, and uh, Sometimes in the, if the game is interesting, I uh, make the, the video about it and I analyze this on video and this benefits uh, uh, not just the viewers but also myself because I force myself to verbalize my thoughts and to analyze the game. And also I have to say that uh, I, I don't... Uh, I'm not uh, in the position that I have infinite uh, time uh, for doing chess, so don't think that I'm someone who is doing chess 8 or 10 uh, hours a day. In fact, I have a full-time job, I work in a private uh, research and development. In fact, I have a full-time job, I work in a private research and development uh, facility. I also am a father of three uh, children, which are uh, rather small children. So I don't have um, much time, I don't have all the time in the world uh, for doing chess. So I'm doing chess maybe one hour a day in, in, in average, but uh, I, I think I do have a right method and this is how I managed to improve. Okay, let's let's now go uh, straight to, to, to the game. Uh, I think this uh, game is uh, very instructive for uh, several reasons. First of all, this is the highest uh, rated opponent I managed to, to win against. So you can see that my opponent is uh, 2072. And um, it's not just uh, for bragging, but I, I really think that uh, this is instructive because this shows... Uh, how to apply the things you have learned. So, I, I'm of course, I'm reading books, I'm doing tactics, I uh, try to analyze my master games. So, uh, in, in this game, I apply uh, many concepts I have learned, and uh, there are also some very instructive moments, I think, uh, especially in the end game, but also in the in the middle game as well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's dig into uh, the game. Um, I opened uh, e4 and this is my uh, general advice uh, to stick with classical openings and uh, especially if you are a lower rated player then you, you, you don't want to reinvent the wheel, uh, just uh, stick to the classical openings, seize the center, uh, develop your pieces, tuck your king to safety and uh, just play chess. Okay, if my opponent decides to play uh, Karakan defense, uh, I immediately seize the center with uh, d4. He plays d5, and now I go for this exchange variations. So e takes d5, c takes d5, and uh, now the common move in this position is uh, bishop d3. And uh, maybe you can see Bobby Fischer often play this variation as well. So the idea of developing uh, this bishop first is uh, just to stop this uh, bishop to f5. Okay. And uh, my idea is, okay, Coco, be quiet. So uh, my idea is to uh, to achieve this kind of uh, pawn formation. So uh, b2, c3, uh, d4 uh, pawns and uh, ju just uh, develop my pieces on, on natural square and uh, uh, to try to get some initiative in the center. So uh, knight f6, normal developing move, uh, knight f3. G6 now. Uh, I have to admit that I uh, didn't encounter this uh, variation very often. So Karakan with uh, the Fianchetto Bishop. But okay, I, I just stick, stick to my normal development uh, plans. So I castle. He Fianchettos this bishop, uh, his bishop. I play a C3. So I have this uh, pawn formation, which I wanted to, to, to have uh, from the beginning. Uh, he castles. And well, now I, I have to... Uh, Start start thinking. It's not just uh, development. So I played h3 uh, here, and uh, just be. It's uh, I think it's a useful move for several reasons. But uh, my advice here is don't play h3, h6, uh, a3, a6 uh, just for the sake of playing it. So it uh, it costs a tempo, and tempo as you can see, you will see in this game uh, there are several instances in which one tempo decided the game. So. Um, don't waste the tempo if you are not sure that uh, it makes sense. So what is the purpose of this h3 move? There are several purposes. First of all, obviously it blocks uh, 
uh, bishop to uh, g4 and uh, this annoying uh, pin of my knight. Uh, the second thing, it's, uh, it stops a knight to g4. So if I wanted to develop, for example, my bishop on e3, then he cannot uh, harass it by g4. But the most important uh, idea behind this move is this diagonal. You can see that this classical diagonal is uh, open uh, for, for my uh, dark square bishop, and I want to control this diagonal with my dark square bishop. So I, uh, by, by playing h3, I'm securing that my bishop uh, has an escape square, because if I play, for example, uh, bishop to f4, he can immediately harass it with uh, knight to h5. And now, uh, what to do? And if I uh, play uh, h3, then I can just uh, attack my bishop and have this uh, very nice classical diagonal under control. So uh, this h3 move comes with uh, three purposes, and so I think it's uh, it is a good move. Uh, just to say, when I analyze my games, I don't use engines. I I check uh, uh, with with the engine uh, after I analyze the game without the engine. Then I just check for blunders and missed uh, uh, tactical opportunities. But when I analyze and uh, when I speak, when I make a video, I am just using my own analysis. So uh, it's possible that there are some uh, tactical mistakes which I which I will miss in this analysis, and uh, maybe uh, my moves are not the the best move moves recommended by the computer. So I'm just using my my common sense, and this is also the way you you should uh, think and analyze your game in order uh, to improve. So I, my estimation is that h3 is a, is a good move um, by for the reasons I just stated. Uh, he plays uh, queen c7, so he understands that I want to uh, to seize control of this diagonal, and uh, he stops it by uh, playing um, uh, queen to uh, c7. But I still want to, to fight for this diagonal for several reasons. First of all, it's a very nice diagonal, and the second of all, if you look... Uh, uh, what are black's chances for counterplay here? It's always about pawn breaks. So if uh, black wants to to crush me, if he wants to to hurt me, if he wants to uh, get the party started, uh, he has to play uh, e5 at some moment because this is the only uh, pawn break he has. He doesn't have c pawn, so he has to think about e5. So this is another reason why I want uh, my bishop to control e5. So I devised a, a small plan. Uh, to play uh, bishop g5, I played g5 with this idea. So, uh, just to remaneuver my bishop on this uh, classical diagonal and uh, controlling e5, and this will also give me a tempo because I attack the queen. Uh, he develops uh, knight to c6, and you can see now his, uh, everything is aim aimed at uh, this e5 move. Now he's covering uh, this square twice, and I'm covering it twice, so I, I have to do something to stop this e5. So I played uh, rook to e1, and he played rook to e8, so counter, uh, countering uh, my, um, my my move. And uh, also, uh, now again, once again, he has uh, prepared uh, e5. And now I continue with my maneuver, so um, bishop to h4. And you can see now if he plays e5, I can just uh, pin, pin the pawn and even win the pawn in the future. And at this moment, I think that... Uh, my opponent underestimated, underestimated me uh, a little bit because it, uh, th this is also, I'm, I'm not judging my opponent, this is what, uh, what I do also when I play a lower rated uh, player, so uh, he's uh, 150 points above me, then I, I also get impatient when I play against lower rated player, I want, just want to crush him and uh, I, I get impatient and I uh, play a little bit reckless. And I think uh, my opponent did, did this in, in this position. So this is also a lesson from uh, psychology. Don't uh, uh, don't uh, make uh, uh, haste moves just before uh, just because your opponent is a low rated. And he played e5 here immediately. And in my opinion, this is a bad move. He should have uh, prepared this um, a little bit more. Um, maybe with something like uh, knight to d7, if he wants to play e5, or just let uh, the d5 go and uh, play play some other move. Okay, but he did play uh, e5 here, and uh, well, I continued with my plan, so bishop to g3, now this uh, pawn is pinned, it cannot be pushed, uh, because uh, he'll just lose uh, the queen, and uh, if you count the attackers and defenders, so he has one, two, three attackers, and I have uh, defenders, sorry, I have one, two, three, four attackers, so this pawn is uh, now very, it's, it's in danger. So he plays um, knight to h5, uh, going after my bishop, and now I use uh, make use of this uh, square and play uh, bishop h2. 
He now realizes that he, this pawn is uh, in danger and he overprotects it with uh, f6. Uh, Grandmaster Ben Feingold would say he never play f6. I'm not sure that it applies in this position, but um, it, it might because this, this f6 uh, does, does weaken. Uh, his king on this diagonal, and uh, I have this diagonal, I, I can very easily, for example, put my queen here, or maybe my bishop in the future. So I'm, I'm not sure about this f6 move. He, he tries to hold the pawn, I can understand this, but I'm not sure this is the right uh, thing to do here. And now I'm, uh, well, my plan is simple. I just, um, I'm focused on, on this e5 pawn and e5 square. So my play goes around this. So I play the bishop to b5. Uh, trying to to pin the the defender of uh, the e5, I can take it maybe later. Uh, he plays a6 and okay, let's let's count the defenders and attackers. So he de he defends. Okay, so the, uh, this one doesn't defend because it, it, it's pinned. So let's not count this one. So one, two, three, and this bishop four. Sorry, four. Okay, how much? How many times do I attack it? One, two, three, four. Okay. So his pawn is safe, uh, safe for now. Okay, uh, bishop a4. I am just uh, retreating, uh, keeping this pin, and now he plays. Uh, well, he he makes my uh, job easier because he plays uh, bishop to e6, and now cutting, cutting away uh, this rook from uh, from protecting the pawn. And now let's count again. So uh, this one doesn't count because it's pinned. So uh, one, two, three. He has now only three attackers, uh, defenders. One, two, three, four. I have four attackers, so I can just uh, cash in on the pawn. Uh, D takes c5, and uh, okay, now he, he realizes that he lost the pawn and he wanted to get some compensation uh, in in terms of uh, pieces activity, and this is a very good approach. Uh, chess is all about pieces activity. If you can have uh, more active pieces uh, than your opponent, then uh, pawn doesn't matter, in, in fact. So he plays uh, b5. Um, I have several options here, and uh, I, I want to uh, to be a pawn up. So if I want to be the pawn up, the only move is e takes f6. So now I'm, I'm attacking uh, his bishop. He's attacking my bishop, and also uh, by by playing this move, I'm uh, making this covered attack on the on the queen. So he has to to move his queen. I take the bishop. Uh, he takes my bishop, and now you can see that this uh, pawn is uh, undefended. So I I snap this pawn. And uh, at this moment, if you count the pawns, you can see that I'm uh, three pawns up. But this is only temporary because I will soon be, soon be just one pawn up. Because you can see that uh, well, uh, this pawn is, is unholdable, obviously, and he also has uh, some tactics with uh, winning this pawn. So uh, the, dust, the dust will soon uh, settle. So knight e5 now discard attack on my queen, and my queen is unprotected, so I'm practically forced uh, to make this exchange. And now he makes this. Uh, he doesn't recapture right away, but he makes this uh, in-between move. Uh, knight takes f3 with check. I have to take the knight, and now he takes uh, my uh, queen, and also discovered, uh, discovers attack on my uh, rook on e1. And you can see that this pawn will also uh, fall very soon, and my rook is unprotected because I'm undeveloped. So I did uh, manage to win a pawn, but uh, I played the price of being uh, underdeveloped, and... Well, my pawn structure is not ideal, but uh, neither is his. He has three pawn islands and two isolated pawns. So I think I'm still better in this position. Um, I have to deal with with this uh, this attack. If I play uh, uh, king here, then I, I will just lose because it will be check and afterwards he will take my uh, rook. So there are uh, many things to calculate uh, here and many tactical uh, traps. Uh, you have to be aware of so your tactical training is is always uh, you can always make use of it. So okay, I played uh, bishop e5 here, so just uh, stopping uh, stopping this uh, this attack, blocking uh, uh, blocking his uh, rook from attacking my rook. Uh, he took the pawn now, and uh, well, it's high time to uh, to do something about this knight. So I am developing the knight uh, knight to d2. Uh, he now takes the uh, the, the pawn. So now he's uh, only one pawn uh, down, and uh, well, there is a very. This is a very rich end game, and you can see that I'm a little bit lower on time. So I'm about three minutes. So I don't have uh, time for some uh, spectacular ideas. So I'm just uh, now playing for simplifications and uh, trying trying to do what uh, so some common sense uh, stuff you'll see. So I decided to exchange this uh, this knight. 
And now um, I have to activate this knight and you can see that uh, d4 square is a perfect uh, for my knight. Because you, if you can imagine uh, the knight on uh, uh, d4, you can see that uh, this knight here cannot be harassed uh, by any of his pieces because he has only light square bishops. There are no pawns which can threaten uh, the knight and the knight is protected. So this is a perfect uh, school example of perfect uh, outpost for, for my knight. So I played knight b3 uh, with the idea of coming to, to d4 and he plays uh, rook a b8 and now I cannot play uh, this knight d4 because he'll just uh, uh, sneak my pawn. And I have to now think how to, to defend this pawn. If I just play uh, rook b1, I think this is a very humiliating thing for a rook to, to, to have the role of uh, taking care of the pawn. And it's not um, very stable because he can uh, take my rook and then I have to take back and uh, move, uh, leave this, this post. So my idea was to somehow put the rook on e2, maybe. And uh, in order to do so, I have to bring my, my king closer. So uh, this was my plan, just to move these pawns and to to put uh, the, the king, to, to activate the king and then maybe king and uh, rook can participate in defending the b2 pawn and I can move my knight. So I played f4, uh, he plays knight, knight, uh, king to f7, activating his king, f3, and now I put, uh, he, he plays uh, king f6 and now I put my king to f2. And uh, okay, now my king is covering these penetration squares. If he wants to go after my uh, my pawns, I can uh, maybe cover this as well. He played h5, and uh, now I decided to exchange rooks. And uh, there is one one principle. I first I read it uh, in, in this book, uh, uh, Simple Chess by Michael Steen. It says that uh, okay, rooks should control open files. But why? Because uh, the only uh, purpose of rook controlling open file is to be able to penetrate to to your camp. And if there are no penetration squares, uh, then uh, rook uh, controlling the file doesn't uh, doesn't do anything. So uh, since my uh, king is here, you can see that I control all these squares. So I don't mind if he, he controls the e-file. Uh, so I uh, decided to exchange uh, rook takes e8, uh, rook takes e8. So like I said, I, I don't, I, I don't uh, care about his rook being here. So now I can play a knight uh, d4 and have this very nice knight here. He plays bishop f5, uh, offering the exchange, but of course my knight is much stronger than his bishop at this moment, so I, I don't feel like exchanging uh, minor pieces, but uh, since I am low on time, you can see that I'm one minute and he's seven minutes, so I, I don't have much, much time, so I decided to try to exchange rooks. So uh, rook to e1, uh, rook to b8, so he is challenging my pawn again, a b3, Rook to c8, uh, now challenging my another pawn, and rook to c1, I have to defend the pawn, this is the only way. Uh, bishop to e6 now, again offering the exchange, and this time I accept it because I am uh, low, low on time, and I'm playing a much stronger opponent, so if if it needs to be a draw, it's okay, because I am, I'm weaker and uh, I have uh, less time, so I don't think I can lose, the game, lose this game, it can be either draw or me winning, if I uh, had more time, maybe I would not uh, go for exchanges. I would try to to find a way to, to win the game. But uh, given the situation, I just exchange uh, minor pieces. Um, king takes e6, and now I continue exchanging. So uh, c4, d takes c4, rook takes c4, rook takes c4, b takes c4. And now we, we uh, come to this uh, pawn ending. And uh, well, my, my, my idea was to to try to, to support uh, this... Uh, uh, this pawns on, on the king side, and uh, well, we'll see how it, it will go. So king to d6, uh, king to g3, king to c5, king to h4, uh, king takes uh, c5, uh, c4, sorry. And now at uh, this moment you can see that, well, I cannot so easily take the g6 pawn, because if I take g6 pawn he will just uh, have, have his pawn uh, promoting. So I have to, to play this carefully and I decided to make a temporary pawn sacrifice. So I played f5 here in order to undermine his connected pawns. Uh, he took g takes f5 and uh, I played f4. And now this is an interesting position which I, I want to discuss with you. Uh, it's uh, the black black's turn here and uh, my opponent thought uh, five minutes about this move. So he took basically all his time. Uh, to uh, to find out the correct move, and 
in fact, you don't need so much time. I, I evaluated this position uh, within some 20 seconds uh, with the method I will, I will just show you. So uh, black has two, two options. One option is to go uh, for here or here. So to, to go for uh, this a pawn. And uh, let me let me let me grab this the uh, these two pawns and see see what happens. Who the queen first? And the other option is to uh, try to fight uh, fight me on the on the king side. And uh, there is a very simple method in which you can uh, you can decide upon these moves. So first of all, when you have the pawn race, uh, pawn and king races. Uh, my advice is don't don't try to visualize uh, ten moves ahead. So don't go like. I go here, he goes here, then I go here, he goes here, if he goes here, I go here, because uh, you will just get lost and uh, you can very easily make a mistake and there are uh, many, many uh, trajectories uh, which king can make. So the, mo the easiest and uh, the method which will uh, give you least mistakes is just to count. So how, count how many, how many moves does white take to promote to a queen? Okay, so one, two, three, four, Kings has to move there, away, five, six, seven, eight. So eight moves uh, for queen. Uh, if black decides to go to the queen side, how uh, many moves does he need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So black needs uh, nine moves, but uh, black is also uh, it is black's move. So this means that. Uh, if it's black's move, so uh, each player needs eight moves to uh, to queen, so they will uh, both queen, and it will be a draw. And you can you can see I'll just uh, quickly play this out. So, uh, for example, let's say that black black goes to the queen side, and uh, well, they they just do this pawn race and they queen. Okay. So the the idea is that you don't have to to visualize. You you, you just need to to count. And if he uh, counted that, then uh, he, he would see that this uh, th this is the only correct uh, way to play. On the other hand, if he, if he wants to play on the king side, uh, well, then you will have the position with uh, two opposing pawns with uh, two kings uh, on on the each side. And uh, in order to evaluate this, you need to know about um, outflanking maneuver. And outflanking maneuver means that uh, once your kings are here and here, uh, whoever moves uh, loses the game. So it's it's a um, uh, classical tsukswang. So uh, the question is, uh, whose move will it will it uh, will it be when uh, we we get this kind of constellation? And you can see that uh, white is here the one controlling uh, who is to play because I can play either a3 or I can play a4. So if I play a4. Uh, he has to play uh, a5, and then it's uh, my move, if I want to have the move. If I don't want to have the move, I can play a3, a5, a4, and then it's his move. So all this analysis took me about 20 seconds. So first I, I counted uh, the moves. It took me like, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 or 15 seconds. And then uh, just by noticing that I'm the one controlling the tempo, I saw that if he goes on the king side, it will be, uh, he will be in Tsuk so if, if, if you know this kind of tricks, you can uh, uh, save uh, much time and also avoid mistakes. And uh, well, my opponent obviously didn't know these, these things because he thought for five minutes and then he chose a wrong, uh, a wrong continuation. So he, he decided to go for the uh, king's uh, king side play and, uh, and this will cost him uh, the game. So the game continued, uh, king takes h5. King d3, uh, king g5, king e4, and this is the position. So who, whoever uh, has to move the king, it will lose. Because if a white has to move the king, then he has to abandon uh, his pawn. And if black has to move the king, he has to abandon his pawn. And now I'm the one controlling. So I want black to be on the move, so I don't play a4 because a5 and then it will be my move, but I play a3. He has to play a5, a4, and now he is in the gang, he has to move. So uh, king to d4. And now we, we just, uh, well, I, I take the pawn and queen and he tries to do the same, but uh, you can see the time much faster. Uh, so 
uh, this is how the game went, but it's not yet over. Okay. And now you can see that I'm winning only by one tempo. Uh, of course, I didn't calculate uh, that far when I was calculating the, uh, the position previously, but uh, if this pawn were just one, one uh, square uh, f further, I, I would not be able to win. This would be a draw because he would just uh, attack his king on, on a1 with a pawn on a2 and I cannot do anything because my uh, king is too far away. So, uh, again, only only by one tempo. Like like in the middle game, uh, he, uh, he uh, couldn't advance a5 because he was missing only one tempo and uh, also now in the, in the end game he's missing uh, one tempo. So there are several ways uh, to, to win this position now. Um, usually if you're... Uh, if the pawn is, um, if it's a knight, bishop, or, or, or center pawns, you just want to put your uh, queen in front of the pawn. But if you have, a, if you are dealing with a rook pawn, then it's not uh, so easily to, to put your queen in front. But uh, you, you can you can mate him uh, just uh, without even winning the pawn. So there are several ways to win it. Win this, I did like uh, like this. So. Uh, I, I gave check, another check, so I'm now coming closer to, to his king, even more closer. And now th this is a, a nice finish, so you have to play uh, in this position, uh, queen to c2. And now at this point he resigns, uh, because of course uh, he has only one uh, one legal move, and this is a2, and this will be followed by uh, queen to c1 uh, checkmate, so at this point uh, my opponent uh, resigned the game. Okay, so this is the analysis. So, like I said, I think that this uh, game has uh, uh, quite a few uh, very instructive moments, and uh, it, it also demonstrates uh, well uh, how the improvement is, is possible uh, in adult age. Just a few months ago, I was sixteen hundred, and uh, well, uh, j j just by by working uh, uh, every day using the light method and not uh, using so much time, I think that uh, well, I'm the proof that you can. Uh, you can advance and you can improve. Of course, if you want to find out more, you can subscribe to my channel. Uh, you will find the uh, email and uh, other contact details uh, if, if you wanted to contact me. And uh, make sure you, you, you watch the Guide to Adult Improvement uh, series. I think you will find uh, plenty of useful advice if you are an adult improvement, uh, improver like myself. I think you can uh, benefit by uh, following some of the methods which I managed to uh, research. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you very soon with more chess. Cheers!